If I hold up this apple, all of our frames of reference are very different, and they dictate how we define this simple fruit, this apple. Now, if I were a farmer, what would this apple represent? Money? Crop? If I were in, say, the ministry, what would this represent? Adam and Eve, Garden of Eden. If I were a techie in computers, what would this represent? <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Apple computer, absolutely. How about if I were in healthcare? Healthy snack, yeah, good fruit. Uh, how about if I were a school teacher? Sucking up. <laughs> Now, dependent on our frames of reference, depending on what we have learned, this means something different to each person. And that's why it is my personal job to make sure that we have common definition because this is where conflict happens. And I'll tell you what I know about conflict. If you have conflict in your life, it's your fault. If you have issues with other people, it's your fault. So what are you going to do to change it? Are you going to be more flexible? Are you going to get rid of them? Are you going to get rid of those friends? It is totally 100% up to you. I have had to learn how to be a better person. And these are learned skills. Biggest problem I have, they're not taught in school today. They should be, but they are not. We really need to make sure that we become the role model for our children and for other people, whether you're a leader in your company, a leader within your social groups, whatever it might be, it is your job to make sure that you're doing that. Now, how many of you have someone in your life that comes to work like this? And they'll come dragging in, and they'll say, you won't believe what happened. Then they'll go to the next person and they'll say, Ed, you won't believe what happened. <laughs> then they'll go to the next person and they'll say, you won't believe what happened. See, and they can suck the life out of a work team in about half a day, right? Now, I will no longer let this kind of person influence me. I will create my own environment by using the TLC. And using it internally is important to make good choices, but it's also important to use it as a communication tool. So what I've learned to take personal accountability for my own environment and what I will do is that I won't let them suck the life out of me anymore. They approach me and I'll use the TLC, the take it, leave it or change it on them. I use it internally, I use it externally. They come up to me and I'll say, you know what I've learned in life? I've learned that I always have three choices. I can take it which means I have a plan. I can leave it, which means I'm going to reject it or walk away from it. Or I can change it, which means I learn. I become more flexible. And then I will ask them this, and here is the key. So what's your plan? And they'll say, well, you know, it, it's, it's a jungle out there. And I'll say, I know. And what I've learned in life is I always have three choices. I can take it. I can leave it or I can change it. What's your plan? And they'll say, well, you know, I have no control over very much. And I'll say, I know. And what I've learned in life is I always have three choices. I can help me with this. I can, I can, or I can. So what's your plan? Now, I probably won't change this person, but what's going to happen? They're going to leave me alone. They're going to go suck the life out of somebody else. Because I have learned how to be flexible to that negative environment and how to use a tool that will ensure that I am moving forward to make sure that I am in total control. It's a great, great technique to use. Some people are considered in this particular group, these are the squares. These are the people that are very well balanced. They're very even keeled on every side. Uh, they're wonderful contributors, and they're really as solid as a rock. They're great. They have a lot of knowledge. They're really good. Now, how many of you might include yourself in this square group? Let me see a raise of hands. Okay. Some hands up. Okay. Then we have the circles. These people are well-rounded. Okay. They kind of roll with the punches. And when conflict or anything happens, it's kind of like water off a duck's back. It just doesn't bother them. 
they get around, get it? They get around and really have a really good base. How many of you would consider yourself to be a circle? Let me see a raise of hands. Okay, we've got some hands up there. Now, we have the triangle group. These people are highly creative. They have a wonderful base to build from. And this, these two sides kind of go up like a vortex. And this allows all that creativity to come in. These people are fabulous brainstormers. These people actually start change. They just don't manage change. They will be the instrument to start change. Now, how many of you think you're a triangle? Let me see a raise of hands. A lot of hands up there. Now, this is one, the diamond, that is a little bit unusual. These are the people that are totally obsessed with sex. <laughs> How many of you want to change your vote now? <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, this whole thing about the square and the circle and the diamond and the triangle, I made it up. And I think what we have to do is be really careful of labeling people. And I think that so many times we go through the DISC, we go through the Myers-Briggs type indicator, we go through all these assessments, and then we give people labels. I think we have to look at our own flexibility. We have to have an understanding of where we are. But indeed, we have to move on and be just a little bit different. Critically important for us to understand it is up to me. I have to be the CEO of myself. Now, one thing that I also know is that we have a filter in our head. I like to call this a spam filter. We all have them. And what happens is it gets filled up with debris. And I want to make sure that I open that filter of other people and that I open my own filter. It's like a gate in your mind. And you really don't get into the intellectual, the intelligent side of the brain until you declog that filter and you get rid of some of that spam. Let me give you a couple examples here. Working out in a gym. How many of you work out in a gym and enjoy it? Let me see a raise of hands. Okay, a lot of you do. You're the people that are healthy, you're in good shape, and everything else. Me, personally, I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. I hate going to the gym. Because we have what I term gym bunnies. Do you know who I'm talking about? These little tiny cutesies. Now, I am totally, totally in agreement that a lot of guys go to the gym for the gym bunnies. They don't go to work out. They just go to see what's there that day, right? Now, what these gym bunnies do in Scottsdale is they have uniforms, right? They have little uniforms, and the bottom part of the uniform is really what bugs me. They have a tendency to use that, that you know, thongy thing, you know? And I look at these little tiny behinds with this thongy thing going on, and I'm thinking, why would I put material back in a place I've been pulling it out of my entire <laughs> life? that material go? <laughs> it looks really uncomfortable. Now, I do know the importance of exercise. Oh, that gives you visual, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I do know the importance of health. I understand at the age of 60, eating and exercise is going to keep me healthy for a very long time. I hate the gym, have to work out, so what I do, every morning I get up and I do a half hour to an hour of something. I have every videotape known to mankind, every DVD, all the equipment, all the exercise balls and the weights, and I'm always doing something. This morning I got up in my hotel room and I did a half hour of the DVD called Tighter Assets. Hey, it works. It really works. I have a sister that weighs 375 pounds and has not been out of bed in six years. She has made different choices. I choose to be healthy. I know that it is up to me to do that. No one else is going to do it for me. There's a technique that I like that is called the freeze frame or the stop frame because you've got all these frames of reference. And when you come across something negative, I think it's really important for us to freeze that frame of reference and turn it into something more positive. I'll give you an example of this. When you wake up in the morning, do you look perfect? Good to go? Don't need to stop in the bathroom, brush your teeth, or comb your hair, all dressed, perfect, ready to go? My guess is not. And I'll tell you, when I get up in the morning, it's terrifying. I have been sweating all night long. The hair is glued to the side of my head. 
i've got this little red point going on looking a lot like woody woodpecker.